Hello everyone, my name is Grant Seltzer Richmond. Today I'm talking about Compile Once, Run Everywhere, the BTF Dream. I'm on the open source engineering team at Aqua. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn, so these are my pronouns. You can recognize me on Slack by my happy little crab guy that I have here. So I wanna talk about my experience as a developer slash maintainer of Tracy. Tracy is a Linux runtime security and forensics tool which uses eBPF to attach to hundreds of different hooks, whether they're system calls or LSM hooks or kernel probes or network events using CC. Uh, we read in a lot of uh, information from the kernel uh, to give information back to the user uh, or apply policy on it using our uh, Tracy rules project. Uh, so we could see here in this example, exec VE uh, is being traced and we're reading in all this information uh, and disp displaying it to the user. So we can see that Z shell has executed um, a couple of different commands using exec VE, ls, and git, and we have all their arguments, and we have the user ID, and we have the process IDs and thread ID, uh, and we have to manually read in all of that data. So in this example here, uh, we are, based on the kernel version, reading in different fields within the task struct to get some information. Uh, this might not be exactly relevant to the exec VE example, uh, but we have different parts of our code that look exactly like this all over Tracy's BPF code, uh, which is a challenge because it's a lot of uh, information to keep track of just for uh, reading in the fields that we want let alone when those fields get relocated to different different places. So it's a challenge to uh, not have a stable API in Linux for reading in uh, the information that we need, which is why we're very excited about CORE. CORE is a concept that's enabled by libvpf. Uh, and in particular, uh, the way that this works uh, and per, uh, you know, very oversimplified way that this works is that uh, libvpf provides these helper functions which read in kernel data structures for us and take into account uh, kernel debug information or DTF that uh, will let libvpf handle finding if fields have been relocated within uh, these structs that we're reading from without any heavy lifting from us on keeping track of all these different changes. So I want to show you a quick example of, of what this uh, enables for us uh, as Tracy developers, as well as uh, for you as a Tracy user or as somebody developing any eBPF code uh, making use of CORE. So as the name says, we can compile once and run everywhere. So here on my development machine, which is a 5.12 kernel, I can run Tracy have it work perfectly, reading in kernel information, and distribute that same exact file to this 4.18 kernel, and also have it work perfectly, reading in the same information, potentially from different kernel fields. And we could see that it's the same exact file. So in Tracy, we have this macro that we uh, have defined uh, and under the hood, it's just essentially just calling BPF probe read, a helper function for reading from kernel memory into a variable on the stack. Uh, and if CORE is defined, we instead of BPF probe read are using BPF core read, which will use that BTF information to find the relocations of various kernel uh, struct definitions. Here's an action. So we have just this simple helper function for getting a mount namespace ID. Uh, and we're just using read kern under the hood. It's either using BPF probe read or hopefully BPF core read, uh, depending on uh, the compilation target. Another big place that CORE has changed our code base uh, is in the include statements. So if CORE is not defined, uh, we have to import all of the header function uh, or header files from user API or all the different definitions that we rely on for reading from kernel data structures. 
Uh, if CRE is defined, we have this vmlinux.h file and this CRE missing definitions file. Uh, and let's talk about what those two are. So vmlinux.h is very interesting. I wrote a blog post about it, so you can check that out on the Aqua blog or on my personal blog. Uh, but it's a generated file. It's generated from the vmlinux file. So vmlinux is the compiled kernel stuffed inside of an elf file. Uh, and it, based on that file, will find all of the type definitions in the compiled kernel. So this file on my system is 150,000 lines. So it has all the, all the definitions uh, and it's used as a baseline for the libvpf helper functions to, um, uh, yeah, essentially a, a baseline for, for you to work with in your BPF code uh, and for the libvpf helper functions to find the relocation. The downside to this very convenient vmlinux.h file uh, is that it does not take into account the helper functions and the macros that you rely on in the actual header files. So I had a conversation on the mailing list about this. Uh, and to be honest, the best solution that we came up with for right now is to redefine all of the macros that we would otherwise rely on or functions that we would otherwise rely on. Uh, and hopefully in the future, you know, I would not expect it to, to stay this way, but for now we're just redefining and maintaining this header file. Perhaps the most exciting thing that CRE changes for us is distribution, uh, and which is really what we want CRE for. So the BPF object file doesn't, compilation doesn't really change much. It just, we're, we're just passing in a couple of variables that we need, uh, but the, place that it does change the most is in our user space Go agent. So uh, using Go's new embed package and directive, uh, we take that BPF object and we embed it in the Go binary. So at runtime, when Tracy starts up, it will take the BPF object out of the Go binary uh, and uh, load it into memory and load it into the BPF VM. and. Um, not have to worry about any external dependencies uh, because if we can detect that the kernel is running uh, with BTF enabled, uh, then we don't have to worry about also distributing uh, a kernel specific BPF object. Uh, and probably more exciting than distribution is the things that have yet to come. Uh, so a lot of this is working upstream, but um, working upstream for a better solution for a missing definitions header file. So one of the ideas that someone came up with uh, uh, in that mailing list conversation is to have a plane built in for uh, checking if a um, type is already defined, which would enable us to have the mlinux.h, but also enable us to import the header files that have the information that we need, like the macros or functions. Uh, this is not unique to CRE, but uh, it would be great to have better verifier output related to these CRE header uh, or helper functions because we certainly ran into a lot of issues that were difficult to debug. Uh, again, not CRE um, or unique to CRE is missing documentation. Uh, so there's a really good blog post that Andre, uh, the maintainer of libppf, has um, uh, written. That's a very good guide for CRE that we certainly relied on for. Uh, getting this feature into Tracy, uh, but I'm, at the time of recording this, really working hard to contribute documentation upstream. Uh, and a uh, big shout out to my coworker, Rafael Tinoco, uh, who is working on packaging kernel BTF files for distributions that don't come with BTF support. So older versions of Debian and Ubuntu, uh, or um, custom kernels that don't have BTF enabled by default, uh, it's possible to still run the CRE binary by packaging the BTF files for those compiled kernels that, that you rely on uh, and run the CRE binary literally and everywhere. So compile once, truly run everywhere, but uh, that's something that we're still working on. Uh, uh, that's called BTF hub. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, which brings me to the end of my talk. So check me out on uh, my personal site, Grant.Pizza, I've written a couple of blog posts uh, about this exact thing recently. 
Uh, you can find me on Twitter and GitHub or, or certainly on the EVPF Slack. Uh, my name on all those is Grant Seltzer. Thank you so much.